Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Sunday Shooting, our weekly exploration of shoot 'em ups from over the years. Today's game is Judgment Silver Sword. This is the spiritual precursor to Eskatos, which we saw last week, and it was originally developed by MK for the Wonder Swan Color. In fact, it's one of the rarest and most expensive games available for the Wonder Swan Color, because it had such a limited run of its uh, physical release on cartridge. It was originally developed as an entry for the 2001 Wonder Witch Grand Prix, which was a short-lived coding competition where um, hobbyist developers could make use of a system called the Wonder Witch, which was basically a homebrew cartridge for the Wonder Swan Color, um, and submit their games to um, whoever ran the competition, I guess. <laughs> um, the competition ran between 2001 and 2003, and Judgment Silver Sword was actually the winner of the debut year. Uh, and it was released commercially in extremely limited quantities in 2004 by Cute, who saw the uh, potential of the game as a commercial release, but evidently didn't think to make very many copies of it. However, this does not mean it's difficult to get hold of today, thankfully. There are several ways you can get hold of a copy without having to track down either a Wonder Witch or Wonder Swan Color or anything like that. Uh, one way, if you want a physical version, is to get the Ginga Force and Eskatos Wonder Pack for Xbox 360, which was released in 2011. Uh, we saw this last time when we looked at Eskatos. So it comes with a manual for all the games, comes with Eskatos on a disc, Ginga Force on a disc, and a soundtrack. And the Eskatos disc actually also contains Judgment Silver Sword, which we'll be looking at today, and Cardinal Sins, also known as Judgment Silver Sword Recycle Edition, uh, which we'll be looking at next time. So, um, MKI developed this game uh, to be a bit of a contrast to some of the other shoot 'em ups that were around at the time. Uh, he noted that there weren't very many extends in a lot of shoot 'em ups, so not many opportunities to get extra lives and one ups and that sort of thing. So, he deliberately made Judgment Silver Sword to be pretty generous with one ups. And you may well have noticed that over the course of Eskatos as well. There's a lot of extended play and one ups uh, that you can acquire throughout that. And it's not based on points, they just pop out from certain enemies sometimes. In fact, Judgment Silver Sword is so generous that if you lose your last life while there is an extend on the screen, you'll collect that extend anyway. And that's called a nice recovery, which is a rather nice touch. Uh, so MK's words in an interview about it was that uh, he wanted to give players a sense of relief that only comes with an extend. Uh, but to counterbalance the generosity of the game, he decided to make the last stage have a dynamic difficulty level based on how many lives you got left. So obviously if you've got more lives, it'll be more difficult because you've got more of a margin for error. So anyway, that's enough talk about Judgment Silver Sword. Let's go play Judgment Silver Sword. Okay, here we are with Judgment Silver Sword. This is the Xbox 360 port, um, which is based on the Rebirth Edition. Um, which was a, a slightly later incarnation of the game. Um, still basically the same thing, though. So, let's go. Wrong button. Good start, isn't it? Any key does not mean start. Um, okay. Now, as always, I'm not going to make any bold promises about my own level of competence at shoot 'em up. so... Stop demonstrating. Uh, I'm going to play on easy, because I'm a wuss. Okay, here we go. Now, if you watched... Last week's video on Eskatos, you will recognise a lot about this game because it is its spiritual predecessor. So there's a lot of things it's got in common with Eskatos. Uh, firstly, you've got the two types of shot. So you've got the wide but not quite as powerful shot and the very narrow, very powerful shot. Secondly, you've got the emphasis on sort of almost time attacking stages. So in order to get the best scores in this, you need to complete the stages quickly as well as accurately. And there's one of the many generous extends you'll find over the course of this game. You'll also see a lot of the enemy attack patterns in this were um, reused and reimagined in Eskatos as well. Things like those green lasers that that enemy just fired out were um, they used quite a bit in Eskatos. And I really like those ones because they have a really nice sort of style about them, the way they kind of bend and rotate and follow you around. Another extend. Here comes the judge, Mitsurugi. This is a boss. Not a very difficult boss. 
largely because we're playing on easy, but, well. As I said last time, there is absolutely no shame in playing a shoot 'em up on easy. Because it allows you to learn the game, familiarise yourself with the basic mechanics, and just enjoy yourself without stressing yourself out too much. It's still a challenge, make no mistake there. It's just not one that's going to have you banging your head against the wall if you're uh, not terribly experienced with the genre. But yeah, another thing I really like about this game is the kind of the sense of impact that your shots have got. Like if you look at any enemy that takes more than one hit, as we're shooting them, the, the, the powerful stream of shots actually pushes them back slightly. And it gives you a real feeling of um, that powerful stream of shots being really sort of unstoppable. Like an unstoppable force that is causing the enemies to be pushed back. It's kind of a variation on um, the sort of hit stun thing you'd get in beat em ups, I guess. And it's something that doesn't always get attention paid to it in shoot em ups. It's just something that I've always found really striking about this game in particular. Your weapons are really strong, feeling of impact. Even though you you never power them up at all over the course of the game, you, you're always you've always just got these two. So the mechanics are simple, uncomplicated. You just get on with it. It's all down to your own skill. And not even luck, really, because like Eskatos, all of these attack waves are predefined, so you can learn them. See, this bit here, you can see a really good example of the... I, I, I'll call it hit stun, because I guess that what, that is what it is. Just not in the context you typically see it. Oh no! First life lost. Still got five, though. You do also actually have your shield in this, just like you do in Eskatos. So I should probably make better use of that. given that I haven't at all. There's that life back. So yeah, I, I mean, I really like this game on its own merits. I just think it's really remarkable to consider this running on a little handheld platform like the Wonderswan Colour as well. I bet it would have been really cool to have this in your pocket back in the day. Well, it would have been cool to just have a Wonderswan colour back in the day. There's are lots of cool games for that. It's not a system I know a great deal about, really. I know it has good versions of Final Fantasy. As most of the modern remakes are at least... Oops! Or at least indirectly based on the Wonderswan colour versions. And then you have stuff like this. And Cardinal Sins, which we'll look at next week. And this whole Wonder Witch thing is pretty fascinating too. It's quite rare, from this time period anyway, that you sort of see console manufacturers specifically encouraging small-scale amateur development. I mean, we've had a few examples over the years. We've had things like Sony's Nitty Rosie system for the PlayStation 1. That was the uh, infamous black PlayStation. And we've had Microsoft's attempts at XNA on the 360. 
Oh, I hate this bit. But yeah, from from what I understand, the Wonder Witch was basically a cartridge that you went out and bought for your Wonder Swan color. And it was essentially a dev kit for the system. So I, I, I don't know how easy it was to make games for it. I believe um, the language that the Wonder Swan color used was C. I read an interview with M. Kai earlier today where he was talking about he specifically decided itchy nose, excuse me. He specifically decided to um, develop Judgment Silver Sword for the Wonder Swan Color because he wanted to um, develop some helpful transferable skills. And he thought that uh, working on a platform that you see as its basis would be a good way to do that at the time. He probably wasn't wrong. It also meant that when the game came to be ported it was a relatively easy matter to do that because it was done in such a universally recognised language. Apparently another reason that he was attracted to the um, the Wonder Swan colour was that uh, it handled memory a little bit differently to some other consoles at the time. So a lot of... Oh, I know. A lot of consoles and handhelds at the time um, had a, a bit of memory that was... Oh no! Oh, this itchy nose is really distracting me. I do apologise. Um, yeah. So, well, one of the things that attracted him to the Wonder Swan colour was um, this uh, this memory usage. So, a lot of uh, systems at the time they set aside part of memory to use for things like save games and that sort of thing. And on the Wonder Swan Color, developers had the option of making use of that reserved portion of memory just for the game. So if you had a game where a save system wasn't important, like, say, a shoot 'em up then you could make good use of that to improve your game. So I don't specifically know the details of how exactly how he made use of that bit of extended memory to improve this game, but yeah, certainly, certainly it's a really cool game. Oh no, I'm still hanging in there. Die! No, there was not an instruction to myself. I am going to continue, even as it hurts to leave that school behind. We've only got a couple of credits, so we, we may not make it to the end of the game, but we'll see. Like Eskatos, there's kind of a, a sort of long-term metagame element to this, where the more you play, the more points you score and so on, the, the more credits you unlock. And I think there might be some additional difficulty options that you can unlock as well as you go through. Whoa there. I think this guy may well be the death of us, so... It's this second phase I can't deal with. And the fact you don't have a health bar on screen to see how well you're doing either. Stop it! I think ideally you want to try and kill him before he gets to that speed. Game over. Very disappointing. Second place. Not bad. One nice thing about this game, it remembers your last set of initials. So you don't have to enter them every time. It's rather charming of it. Okay, just for comparison's sake. Just for comparison's sake. Let's have a look at hard mode. Because why not? Uh, 
I've got a high score already. Well, there's definitely more bullets. Definitely lots more bullets. And I don't think that multiply system was there in easy mode either. So offhand, I'm not entirely sure exactly how that works. But it seems to sort of continually build up as you defeat enemies in succession, perhaps. And then it declines over time. Oh my god, that is a lot more bullets. Yeah, because on easy you can just sit between those two streams and shoot him from there. Oh, it's really hard. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. There we go. I can do this. Fourth area, and I'm nearly dead. <laughs> oh no, I am dead. Oh no, there we are. That's a nice recover. I believe the trigger conditions for that are supposed to be if there's a one-up on screen when you die. But it seems to just happen anyway sometimes. Yeah, definitely much higher scoring potential on hard mode as well, thanks to that multiplier system. Because, you'll recall, by the end of our easy mode playthrough there, we had, I think, 1.9 million, and we've already passed that. Quite comfortably. Um, let's not continue. I, I would like to record that high score. That'd be nice. So anyway, that is Judgment Silver Sword. This is a really, really nice shoot 'em up that I've always had a lot of time for ever since I tried it for the first time uh, back when I discovered Eskatos for the first time. Um, so yeah, very much worth your time. And as I say, you can get it in various different places now. Um, this is the Xbox 360 version we're playing here. Uh, probably the most readily available version is the Steam version, put out by Dejika Games. That obviously replaces all the Japanese text with English text as well, so you don't have to try and decipher what's going on there. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. Be sure to check out moegamer.net for new articles on Japanese and Japanese-inspired video games new and old every weekday. Every month, Moegamer features an in-depth exploration of an individual game or series as its cover game, so be sure to check the archives to see if your favourite has had a deep dive yet. If you'd like to support the site directly, please consider becoming a patron or buying me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.